All right, thank you very much. Good day, everyone, for hopping on the call. This is a forest boot camp organized by the Smart Traders Network. And like yesterday, we had one of our resource person in the house, Mr. Bolua Tife Ojo, who took us on introduction to Forex, what is tradable in the forest market. We look at the peeps, we look also to market structure and what is intended or how you intend to play or playing it the right way. We're able to look at all of that yesterday. I wanna say thank you again to Mr. Bolu for the source you gave us yesterday. You opened the floor very well and that's why we are here back again today. Thank you so much. We love you. Thank you, we appreciate you. And for everyone that hopped on the call, thank you so much for hopping on the call. I know you got value from the call yesterday. That was just an introduction. We have a lot of package that is for you. It's a three-day seminar today and tomorrow. We'll be wrapping it up tomorrow. And then let me say this quickly, the PDF file of the material yesterday has already been dropped. The lecture is already in the Telegram group. So if you are not on the Telegram group, you are joining us from either the YouTube or from WhatsApp, the link will see be in this video description. Join the Telegram group. You can access the lecture material for day one in the Telegram group. And then the video is already on our YouTube channel. The video is already there and it's already doing amazing. This is the video here, day one. You can see that. So if you have not uh, watched it or you were not in the call yesterday, you can go ahead and assess the video right on our YouTube channel so that you can follow it step by step and then we continue from what we have today. Today we are having, as you can see on the screen, market structure, risk and trade management. Market structure, risk and trade management. We are going to start the teaching, but before we do that, I think I should, this is the foundation of Forex. Yes, sir. You had me right. This is the foundation. If you don't get this foundation, maybe you should just try something else. I've always said so. Try something else. But if it is Forex, you want to trade, you want to make a fortune from this industry, I just believe me, you can't do without foundation. You can't do without a proper understanding of market structure. Yeah, a lot of persons trade different things and stuff like that. But um, I just, I know this is the basis, you know, when somebody is talking to you so passionately, we are not just speaking of, speaking from our senses, we are speaking from wealth of experience. Experience, yes. Experience, we are speaking from wealth of experience. Okay, let me see. Um, let, let me see if I can just, Let's look for the meaning of experience. I think you can see experience has to do with practical contact with observation of facts and events. Number two, definition, an event or occurrence which leaves an impression on someone. So we are speaking from um, a whole lot of um, how will I put it now? We've been here, we've been around, we know what's happening. So when we are speaking to you, we're not just speaking to you because we just feel like talking, we feel like maybe teaching, we don't have a job or something. We are trying to educate you on what we have passed through. We have passed through the level you are right now. We have passed through this stage where you knew nothing. We have passed through the stage where we, the formative stage, where we began to learn it step by step. There were times that Forex was completely um, uh, strange to us, you know. We have had our hits, we have had a lot of stuff that, you know, has, that has gone under the water. So we are speaking from the volume of all these experience put together. So when we tell you what is obtainable, I, I, I want to beg you, just, just know that's what is obtainable. Except maybe you want to try something else. Yes. Like those in my mentorship team, I 
I tell them every time, if you are going to be successful, you need to follow a mentor's track record. It's not enough to hear your mentor speak. It is following what his instructions, doing as he guides, as he leads. That's what makes you a mentee. You are not a mentee because possibly you had access to one or two of my videos and you just watch. You didn't implement what was said in those videos. Then you said, I'm your mentor. Sorry, guys, I'm not your mentor. No. A mentor is one that takes instruction from a teacher. That's why you're a student. So Forex trading starts from market structure. And market structure must be combined with risk and trade management so that you can grow your account. This is just the basis. So I'm going to be taking time to talk more on risk and trade management, how you can take a $10 account to a $100 account. You can take a $100 account to a $1,000 account. I'm going to show you everything, the formula I use. I'm not telling you things that are on YouTube. I'm not telling you things that I want material. I'm telling you things that I do. And I'm very sure if you do the same, you will have results. I'm very sure of that. So we're gonna start from market structure now. I'm going to delve into the teaching and then I'm going to begin to take you step-by-step step on what you need to know. This is a forest bootcamp, it's a training. So as I'm speaking, if you don't have your writing materials, you will do where to get them. You want to get your notepad, you want to get a writing material, a pen and all of that, you need to get them, put them together. As I'm teaching, screenshot, write, take notes, drop your questions in the comment section. Well, in the uh, comment section, we're going to look, take time for questions and answer. We're going to extray a whole lot of things today. I'm trying to lay this foundation so that we are being passionate because <clears throat> By the grace of God, we want to make impact, you know. We want people to see the market differently. That's why we're doing it. We want you to see the market the right way. We want you to see the market how we are seeing it. So that you don't get trapped. And then after blowing the account, you 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 struggled to fund then. I'm in Nigeria currently, and this part of the world, I know how difficult things are. Yes, I know. So we and it's globally, it's not as if it's only Africans or Nigerians are expecting, experiencing global meltdown everywhere. There's a global situation everywhere. You know, prices are increasing, uh, income is, is small, it's very slim, it's, it's not able to meet up with the demands and all of that. So you want to get an extra income, you must follow the principle, you must follow the principle. So I want to say again, thank you so much for hopping on the call. You have friends, you have families, you have contacts you want to share this link with. Why not? If not, go ahead, share the link, drop all your questions in the comment box. We are going to attend to it. We're going to do a lot of calculations. We look at some of the pairs, some of the assets. Then we look at calculations, how you are taking entries and all of that. We're going to take all of that step by step. So let's go right now straight to what we have in the session. My name, once again, is Moses Edogame Salaki. I'm the host of this Forest Bootcamp. And this is the two. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you very much for hopping on. So before we go, for our teacher yesterday, a resource person that took the introduction to Forest, let's drop a fire emoji in the chat box if you got value from day one of this forest bootcamp. You got value, why not drop a fire emoji? In the chat box, we are going to head on straight away now. So let me remove this. You got value from the one. Just drop a fire emoji in the chat box. Yes, let's go, let's go, let's go. You got value from the one, let's go. Drop a fire emoji in the chat box. I'm super excited. Yeah, thank you for your feedback. All right, thank you everyone. Drop a fire emoji for our teacher. This is for Mr. Oluwatife Ojo, a resource person for yesterday. Drop a fire emoji. Let's go, fans. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, thank you for your feedback. So get your notepad. Let's go.
market structure, risk, and trade management. I don't want to call it risk management alone. I don't want to call it trade management alone. So I choose to call it risk and trade management. The reason being that it is not enough to know risk management. You must also know trade management. Very important, like very important is key. You must know trade management. So let's get to it. What is market structure? I've made other videos in respect to market structure. They are on the YouTube channel. You can go check them out yourself. But for the purpose of this Forest Bootcamp, I want to just give you the source directly, make it as simple as it can be. So market structure is simply the pattern in which price, price moves. So we're basically talking about price action, what price is doing at a particular time with regards to history, that's market structure. And let me say this, that basically the market is either buying or selling. Basically, it's either buying or selling. But for purpose of uh, a study and education, we try to categorize market structure into three various categories. You have the bullish trend, the consolidation phase, and then we have the bearish trend. I'll say that again, we have the bullish trend, the consolidation phase. So I can bring this down now. We have the bullish trend. Would that be nice? Okay, that's the topic. We have the bullish trend the consolidation phase, we have the bullish trend and the bearish trend, bullish, bullish trend, the consolidation phase, and then we have the bearish, trend. These are the three types of market pattern price action. These are the three types of market structure. You don't want to forget this. I'm going to show you gradually. These are the three types of market structure. These are the pattern in which the price takes. So we have bullish trend, consolidation phase, and then we have the bearish trend. Bullish trend simply means when the market is buying. Consolidation phase, the pr price is trapped in between a zone. Market is within a region, not a line. So we call that a support and a resistance. Price is trading between like a roof, a roof or a ceiling top, and then the floor. I'm gonna show you. And then the bearish trend market has changed direction and market is selling. Price action is towards the downside. So we want to start shorting the market. These are just the three. Please, you just have to bear with me <clears throat> for my voice. Just try and bear with me. Just try and bear with me. All right, so let's go. Let me begin to direct this now. Oh, do I want to? Should I? OK, let me. Annotate. Let me just annotate first. We're going to write. Let me annotate. Market is making a series of higher highs and higher lows. Higher highs and higher lows. Higher highs and higher lows. This is an example of a bullish trend. Market is giving you series of higher highs. This is a low. Price starts from a low. This is a low. And then price comes and gives you a higher high. Or gives you a high. Let me start from a high. And then price comes and give you a higher low. I want to be as practical as possible. Then price comes and gives you a higher high. 
Why is it a higher high? Because it's higher than this previous high. You get it now? It's a higher high because it's higher than this previous high. Then why is here a higher low? It's a higher low because it is high. It's higher than this low. It's higher than this low. It's a low, but it's higher than this low. It's a low compared to this. This is a high. This is a low, but it's higher than this low. So this is a higher low. Then price comes and give you another higher low. Then price comes, trade upwards and give you a higher high. Price comes trade above, giving you a higher low. So this is, this is a higher high because it's higher than this. So if you keep marking it like this, it makes it easier for you to understand it. Makes it easier. This is a bullish trend. Market is going up. It's obvious. You can see it. Price tend to be making series of higher highs and higher lows. A high, a low, a higher high, a higher low, a higher high, higher. And now price has given us another higher high. So this is what we say the market is, the market is bullish. Now, let me say this, that a higher high is only valid when a higher low has been created. A higher high is valid when a higher low has been created. All right, let me, let me cut this off so that I can write on it. So in a bullish trend, Price makes price makes makes series of series of higher high and higher low, higher highs and uh, let me use this higher lows. That's the definition of a bullish trend. Then also take note, a higher high is valid, is only valid once price makes a higher low. Is valid once a higher low is formed. Okay, let me put it like that. Once price makes a higher low, that is when a higher high is valid. I'm going to explain. Yes, I will explain. Once price makes a higher low, that is when a higher high is valid. All right, look at this. Price was here, traded down, or price is here, now this is a higher high. And then this is going to be valid until price comes to give you a low around this region. Until a low is formed, this high is not valid. The reason is that price can keep going. Price can keep giving you something like this, can keep giving you something like this. So this low has not been formed. So you can't call this a higher high. This is the last higher low, this is the last higher high. Price has broken above, but until price comes to give you a low, a valid higher low, you can't call this a higher high. This is still the last valid higher high. I want to believe you are getting it. If you are getting it, fine, drop a fire emoji in the chat box, let me know. If you are confused, you can also drop your question there. I'm going to be checking them frequently. So until price comes and gives you all of this low, this high is not valid. Now this low has been created. This becomes a higher high. And then until this higher high is created, this is not a higher low. Until another higher high is created, this is not a higher low because this higher high can come and price can come like this. So this is a higher high. This is no longer a higher low. It's now lower than this previous higher low. You get it now. So this is how to identify a bullish trend. Price keep going in this direction. It's obvious. You can see that price is moving in this direction. This is a bullish trend. Price keeps making series of higher highs and higher lows. Now let's go to the next, um, the next 
phase, we have the consolidation phase. In the consolidation phase, price tend to price tend to make would that be fine? Okay. I'm just returning back to the color. All right. In the consolidation phase, price is trading within a zone. Within a zone. Price is trading within a zone. Like it is support and resistance, price tends to go in a zone. So you have something like this. Price can be trading, let's say, from down. If it bounce off in this support, goes up, touches a resistance, maybe creates something like this and comes back to this. And price tends to move within this region. This is what we call consolidation phase. But remember, I said price is doing two things. In a normal market situation, we only have buyers and sellers. So just look at consolidation phase as that phase where price has not been able to determine its direction. So there is a lot of bargain in this place, you know, a lot of bargain. All right, I'm going to buy this for $100. I'm giving you $200. Agreement has not been reached. It is only when agreement has been reached that price will now take direction. If that payment is made, goods exchange hands. So basically, price is buying or price is selling. Basically. But a time come where smart money might want to keep trading within a zone, within a region. I didn't say a point, I say a zone. So it can be within this zone. You can see price trading within a zone like this. This is what we are talking about. It's a zone, a region. It's not like a point, so you draw a line. It can kick out of the, kick out, just look at this. It kicked out of this line, came back again, kicked out of this line, but it's still within the zone. So all this is your consolidation phase. I hope you have gotten that. Then the next uh, type of market structure is the bearish trend. The bearish trend. Here, price is making series of lower lows and series of lower highs. The market is going down. Price is making series of lower lows and series of lower highs. All right, let me put this. Please just bear with me. I want to take it gradually, little by little, so that you understand the price. Price makes series of lower highs and lower lows. Yeah, I think you'll be able to understand understand that. So in a bearish trend, price is making series of lower highs and lower lows. Yeah, this is something like this. So let me give you, this is a bearish trend. Price is making series of lower highs and lower lows. Market price is descending. How can one ascertain a valid higher low? I just said, so a higher low is valid only when a higher high has been created. A higher low is valid only when a higher high has been created. And when a higher low is broken, I'm going to tell you what is expected for you to do. I'm going to tell you what is expected. Once price breaks this low, I'll tell you what to do. I just starting the training. So the next thing, I want to give you an example. This will definitely not be picture perfect, but if you follow it, we're going to be able to identify the same thing on the chart. So price is giving you a move like this, a formation like this. It creates a high, gives us a low, give us a high, a lower high, and price goes to give us a lower low. A lower high, price gives us a lower low. A lower high, price gives us a lower low. A lower high and price gives us a lower low. So price is giving us something like this, okay. Yes, something like this. So first price gives us, this is a high. I will identify this as my high. Yeah, this is a high. 
price comes, the next thing price comes and give us a low. Then price comes and give us a lower high. It's a lower high because although it is low, it is, it's a high, but it's lower than this high. It is high when compared to this, but it's lower than this high. So this is a lower high. Then price goes and gives us a lower low, lower than the previous low. This is the previous low. Now price comes and give us a low that is lower than this previous low. You get it now? Then price comes and gives us a, another lower high. Why is it a lower high? Because it is lower than this previous high. Although it is a high, but it's lower than this high. Then price comes, gives us a lower low. The same concept, concept, it is low and it is lower than this previous low. So this becomes a lower low. Price comes again, gives us a lower high in the same order. And then price gives us a lower low in the same order. Price gives us a lower high in the same order. So if you see this pattern series, that's why I call it series. So it's not just a one move. Price can give us this and um, just move up. You can't call this a bearish trend because it must be series, repeated series. Please, repeated series. That is when you can confirm that this is the pattern. Remember, it's called price action. That's why I said market structure is simply the pattern in which price moves. The history, price moves in this pattern for the last 24 hours, for the last two weeks, for the last three weeks, for the last four days, it becomes a pattern. So you can't just see one candle and say, oh, this candle, because it's, it's bullish, so the candle is, is, is market is bullish or market is selling or market is buying. It doesn't work that way. That the candle is bullish does not mean that price is, is bullish. Price is buying. You see just one candle. You can't take one candle to determine what the market is doing. So all these persons that trade candles and they said, oh, the candle is just a, because the big candle is, 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 market is moving up. The candle has been trading for the past one hour. You just want to launch into the market. Market doesn't work that way. It establishes a pattern, which is called market structure. So it is this lower high that validates this lower low. Or yes, this lower low rather validates this lower high. So let me write that too. Let me see if I can put it here. A lower low is a lower low. Lower low validates. Let me put it like this. Validates the lower high. Until a lower low is created before a lower high is valid. Okay, let me push this upward. Until a lower low is created before a lower high is valid. So you are not going to just jump into the market and you just, just want to jump into the market.
Hello, farms. I, I'm sorry for I'm sorry for that break. If you can still hear me, please let me know. If you can hear me, just let me know. I, I'm sorry for that break. We had the had some issues, and if you can hear me, let me know so that I can hear you still. Still, we can hear you now. All right, all right. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Sorry for that break. We had some issues to sort out and I needed to attend to them. Okay, so in a consolidation phase, so I've looked at the bearish trend in a consolidation phase. This is how market moves. Market moves from being bullish to consolidation to being bearish. Market will never move from being bullish and enter being bearish. No, sir. This is the phase. It's a cycle. It moves from being bullish to consolidation phase and then price moves down to the bearish momentum. So you want to be able to spot all this out so that you know how to get your entry. So let me give you um, this. Let me push this down. Please, if you have not screenshot this, why not? Just go ahead, screenshot it right now. As I said, the single candle does not determine what happens in the market. A single candle does not determine what happens in the market. So let me copy this. You want to screenshot this, just go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, screenshot that. All right, let's go. Let me push this down. They are going to have access to the material, so don't worry. Now, in a consolidation phase, I want to now peep everything together. I want to like put everything together from this phase to from being bullish, price moves to being bearish. I want to now put everything together so that you see the movement. We're looking at the pattern in which price moves. If you know the pattern, it becomes very easy for you to trade, trade it. So let's say we have a something like this. Price is making all of this series of higher highs, it gives us a higher low. Price gives us a higher high, gives us a higher low, gives us a higher high gives us a higher low, maybe something like this. And then price comes, gives us maybe something like this. Maybe something like this. I'm just trying to give you a normal situation, normal market situation, like what you should expect. Uh -huh. This is how price moves. It's not like, um, let me give you just something like this. Maybe class all of this, and then price changes direction. Price changes direction. Price changes direction. This is a normal market situation. So you are going to be the one to be able to identify what price is doing. You're going to be the one to be able to identify what price is doing at the moment. You should be the one to identify what price is doing at the moment. So now we're going to label this in a typical market situation. Let's see if we can still go. This is a, a low for me. This is a low. This is a high for me. There's a higher low. Is a higher low. Is a higher high. Is a higher low. Can clone all this now. Is a higher high. You have to be able to identify all this in the chart. Now price came here and gave us a higher high. Follow me, please. Gives us a higher high. 
Why is this a higher high? Because it's higher than this. And price came and gave us a higher low. This is the higher low. This is the higher low. Is higher but lower than this. Then the next place price comes, price did all of that and gives us a higher high. This is the last higher high because this is like a double top. Price came. And why this double top is here? This is a consolidation phase. Price tries to build liquidity in the smart traders network. We trade smart money. So using smart money concept, we know that this is some form of liquidity. Retail traders are here. So we have a lot of buy stops in this place. A lot of buy stops are here because once you enter the market from here, you put your stop loss here. People are having um, buy orders here also that if price breaks out of this uh, resistance zone, price should bounce off as a support and go up all that good stuff, you know, price should bounce up. And so there are a lot of buy orders here, a lot of stop losses around this zone. So price came, gave us that move and allow retail traders to start selling. So a lot of people are selling around this place. This is your resistance level. This is your support. There are a lot of sell side liquidities here. What it means is that people are buying this. There are people buying, and they want to take profit from here. People are buying, they want to take profit from here. Why sellers are here trying to sell down and take profit from here. But what is price doing? Price is consolidating. Price can bounce up this support, goes up, and then, okay, maybe it's something like this, bounces off here, comes back to retest this zone. So those are trade trend line and support and resistance. They start taking their buys from here. Second touch, third touch. They take price upward. Why those that also trade that are selling, they want to enter from here and start coming down. Price comes first, takes out everybody here. Until price closes above this and starts making move. This was the last low. This was the last higher low. And now this is last higher high because it's now higher than this. All these ones were higher, but price has not broken this higher low. So this thing, we, this is a consolidation phase. Price is within a zone. And then price comes and gives us a higher high. So this is the known higher high. This becomes the known higher high. So this is bullish. This is bullish. This is bullish. This is consolidation phase. This is consolidation phase. This consolidation phase, and then this is the bearish phase, the bearish trend. This is bearish. So at this side, what are we expecting? This is a low for me. This is a low. This is a low for me because on this place, price came to. So this is a low for me. Then this is a lower high. This is a lower high. Because it is low, it is high, but it's lower than this. You can get, get it now. This is a lower high. This is a lower low. Price has changed direction. Price has changed direction. This now becomes the lower low. This becomes a lower low. Then this becomes a lower high. This becomes your lower low. A lower high is formed. You must be able to spot all these things in the chart. You must be able to identify them. That's what makes you a trader. That's what tells us that you understand market structure. Yes, you must be able to spot all this. So now, a Price moves from being bullish 
enters a consolidation phase, accumulates orders, you know, and then smart money moves price away. Smart money moves price away. So now that, now that price has come to this level, this is what you expect. In a bullish trend, you want to only be buying. Yes, you want to only be buying. Why in a bearish trend, you want to only be selling. You want to only be selling. So you can write it like this. In bullish trend, look for buys only. And then in the bearish trend, look for sell opportunities only. Whichever way you want to write it, but just make sure you get what I'm explaining. So since we are going to look for buys only on um, a bullish trend, you want to wait for price to come to this higher low. Price should come back to the higher low. If price makes a higher high, now that you understand market structure, you know that price is definitely going to come to give us a higher low. So you want to wait for the higher low. So price comes to the higher low, then we can buy upwards. Now price comes, break this higher high, creates another higher high. Young is just to expect price to return back to the higher low. Then when price comes to the higher low, you want to buy again and you take price higher. Then price breaks and creates a higher high. Then you want to wait for price to return back to the higher low. So higher lows are buying opportunities. Buying opportunities. You want to wait. There are other evidences and confirmations we use for entries. Yes, the other evidences and confirmation we use for entries. This is what we teach in the smart traders network. This is what we teach in the smart traders network. So if price is uh, coming back to this, you want to set your entry on this place, put stop loss on this higher low, and then you take price to this last higher high. This is how you want to take your trades. And then you can take price upward because price keeps going. So if you get an entry from here, you can add the second entry from here, you go up, you can add the third entry because once price makes a higher low, price is going for a higher high. If we are still on a bullish trend, then price comes, gives all of this consolid consolidation. But did this still give us a higher high? Yes, sir. This is a higher high that was created. Now price came and gave us a break around this region and then price went back giving us a bearish formation. So in a bearish market, you want to only sell once price is coming back. This is where you want to sell. Price has given us a lower, a lower low. You wait for the lower high. Take your sell opportunities from the lower high. From here, put your stop loss at this side and then you want to sell down. These are how to take trades in market structure. So in a bullish, structure as i said price will definitely come and give you a higher low get an entry from there if price comes on the bearish trend to the lower high you get an entry from there now let me say this before i leave this place so you want to screenshot this why not you can go ahead and screenshot that you want to enter from here and sell downward Maybe I should still leave this. You want to enter from there. Stop loss here. If you want to screenshot this, you can go ahead and screenshot that. In a bullish structure, before we talk about the next thing I'm going to talk about now is how to know a valid break of structure. I saw that question in the chat section. How do we know a valid break of structure? How do we know a valid break of structure? To know a valid break of structure, that is the next thing we want to talk about. Okay, so let me push price down. Let me push this down. Let's go, let's go, let's go. In a bullish structure, price will have to... Bullish structure or in a bullish train, price will have to 
that to close previous previous or most recent almost recent low before a break of structure is established before a break of structure So you want to take note of this. You want to take note of this. Recent low, recent low, recent low. In a bullish trend, price will have to close below the previous almost recent low before a break of structure is established. See, let me copy this. It is. So also in a bearish momentum or in a bearish structure, in a bearish trend, price will have to close above the, we have to close above, this is above, the previous almost recent high most recent lower high, then put lower high before oh, breaking market structure. Structure is established. Price you have to close below the previous and most recent. This is bullish, higher low. Before making market structure is established. Okay, I think I've gotten it correct now. Please, let's take note of these things I'm writing. In a bullish trend, price will have to break close below. If price is bullish, price will need close below before we talk of a break of structure. So this is bullish and it kept running. So on T price, this price close below this place, there's no break of structure. So the break of structure is when price close below this, the last higher low, price has closed below the last higher low. That's what we can talk about a break of structure, price close, below the most recent higher low. That's when you call it break of structure. Now for a bullish momentum, a bearish momentum, price we need to come and give us something like this and close below this last lower low in a bearish trend. Price will have to close below this, the body of the candle will have to close below, above this rather, and then we can talk of, it tells you that market has changed course. It tells you market has changed course when price now comes and close above this. When price comes and give you a close above this, this is when you know that market has changed course, has changed direction. So let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. If you are getting value from this teaching, you can just let me know by dropping a one one in the chat box. Drop a one one. If you understand what I've been teaching so far, let's go drop a one one so that I will know. <clears throat> All right, so let's have this now. I want to now tell you what institutional candle is. A break in market structure is only established in a bullish trend when price closes below, below, below. So let me give you something like this. So price is bullish, price gives us all of this. Gives us all of this. If you are getting value from this teaching, please let me know. Let me know.
getting value, you are getting value from this. Okay, this is, I want to give you a typical chart example of what you should expect for a break of structure. All right, okay, thank you for your feedback. So we have something like this. Now look at structure. Structurally, price is going, giving us a higher high, a higher low, a higher high, a higher low, okay? It's giving us a series of higher highs. You can see that price is giving us a series of higher highs and higher low in that order. Price is giving us a series of higher highs and higher lows in that order. Okay, better be like the higher high higher low and then what did you notice price came to this region and gave us like a double top early sellers retail traders you and i you know we just want to shut the market we, we don't want the market to leave us so we jump in we start selling but to us in the smart traders family we know this is liquidity price comes and clears this liquidity and gives us a break of this last higher low of this last higher low. Price comes and breaks this last higher low. There was a higher high formed and price breaks this last higher low. This is what is referred to in trading as break in market structure. It's all referred to as break in market structure. It's telling you that the bullish momentum, the bullish trend has come to an end. Price now wants to begin to go bearish but remember price must consolidate so price comes and consolidates here consolidates creates liquidity and then takes out those liquidity and come down now all this move that goes up and takes out this liquidity and led to this break of structure is what we call institutional candle this is the institutional candle and here becomes our area of interest so from this institutional candle where liquidity was swept there is an area here. Price has broken structure. So instead of looking for buying, we should be looking for selling opportunities. So to sell, price came and gave us all of these within that zone, around this place. The institutional candle is here. Price will come back to it. Somebody asking, how do we know a valid break of structure? This is how to know a valid break of structure. We want to wait for price to come back to that candle. The higher low, the last higher low has been broken. The price comes back to mitigate that institutional candle. And then we can now look to enter selling opportunities here. We can look to now sell from here. Sell from here, stop loss above this high. Then we can look to take price down. So this is how to trade um the trend you just want to follow the trend as price is here you want to buy from here price goes up gives us a low goes up you want to buy from here then price come and break this structure why you were trying to buy price broke this structure change course change direction follow the market now begin to look for sell opportunities so some of you that are in the telegram group sometimes you drop a chat and i'll just make comments why are you looking for buying opportunities when you can clearly see that market has broken structure, you should be thinking of looking for sale. The other lower time frame confirmations and evidences of accumulation and distribution. These are all the things we teach in the mentorship uh, team. We want to tell you how to take entry so that you can have a lower risk in this trade. Then we show you that but you can just set your limit here and then you want to stay, but you are definitely going to sell from here. And then trade begins to go down, giving us a low, lower low, higher lows, lower low, and all of that, giving us all that series down, higher lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. And then what can you find from here? Market comes again, consolidate for a while. And all those that trade double bottom support and resistance, they get into the market, trying to sell the market. Price comes, clears them off with this and rallies down breaking structure. So this becomes a break of structure. This becomes a break in market structure. Because price 
has broken the last lower high. Price gave us a lower low, lower high, lower low, and price broke this lower high, giving us a higher high. So this becomes a breakup in market structure. So once price breaks market structure, you now want to start looking for buys. So you want to wait for price within this last candle that pushed out this person, this early bias, and then you want to take your entry from this region. You want to buy from here, enter from here. Your entry is here, your stop loss down, and then you take price upward. This is how to trade market structure step by step. And as I've said in my other videos on YouTube, you can go check them out, the market structure series one and two. The candle, this candle around here that pushed early buyers out of the market is an institutional candle. Most of the times, price will create an IPA or imbalance within this region. These are the things that validate an institutional candle. First, it took out, it took liquidity, liquidity sweep, it cleared off early buyers and resulted to a break in market structure. So you want to wait there and look for confirmation to take price higher. This is how to trade. This is how to trade. We have a smart money checklist that we use. I'm not going to tell you how we use all this. You just want to uh, come to the Telegram group so that we can have a grasp of how we do this. First is structure. This is smart money concept checklist that we use in the smart traders family. First is your structure. You want to identify the structure. Second is your range. What is the trading range that you are talking about? The number three is your liquidity. You want to be able to spot liquidity, internal liquidity to be taken, external liquidity for targets, internal liquidity above entries and external liquidity for target. All these concepts, you are going to get to know them when you progress in your trading journey. They want to find out the bank levels. What are the bank levels? What are the, yes, the institutional candle, the banks are hiding. And lastly, you want to use your Fibonacci tool, your feeds, your Fib levels. Let me just put it Fib levels. Yes. You want to use your Fibonacci tool for extra confirmation. This is the smart money checklist that we use in trading, smart money checklist. This is what we use for trading. Smart money checklist. So as we progress in this journey, we are going to be, what is the institutional candle for bullish and bearish structure? What is, as I said, institutional candle is that candle that captured liquidity. This candle, this move that cleared early sellers and resulted to a break in market structure. So this is the candle. This is the candle, this candle here. Let me remove this. This is the candle, all of this. All of this candle. This is the candle that pushed up, cleared everybody that was selling from here and then ran down, resulted to an impulsive move or an expansion phase before price came back to mitigate it and then we kept going down. So that candle that took liquidity and led to a break of structure. That is the institutional candle. You can find more explanation on the market structure series one and two on our YouTube page. They are all there. And I said, most at times, not all the time, most at times it will create an insufficient price action, imbalance or your IPA. Check out the market structure videos on my YouTube channel so that you can have more understanding. The next question here, so after a break of structure, how do you confirm the candle that led to that break of structure so as to wait to enter perfectly for a buy or sell? I just explained that. You want to, first of all, if you're able to identify that candle, you now want to wait for price to come in. You see what I drew? This was the candle that took this out. Now, this is the candle. 
Let me remove all of this. So this is the candle. This is the candle. The candle moved. Sorry, this and this is the candle. This was the candle down, cleared all this early bias. This is liquidity sweep or stop hunt. And then resulted to a break in market structure. So you want to wait for price to return back to it, then you cannot look to buy from here. You can look to buy from here. Does it mean that in a bullish trend, the institutional candle must be bullish and vice versa? The candle must be bullish, it's buying, it's buying. Yes, the candle should be bullish and must be bullish. Why this candle must be bearish? It will be a sell candle. Yes, it will be, it will be. How do we know the right entry point after the break of structure? The right entry point, uh, I'm going to, I don't know, discuss that maybe the next uh, um, resource person might handle that tomorrow or should handle that tomorrow. We're gonna to look at that tomorrow, but I just showed you now. So price is coming back to this candle and then you can take your entry from here. Now there are so many checklists that we now look, we call them lower time frame confirmations or evidences of accumulation. We accumulate below the lows and then we distribute. We distribute at the highs and accumulate. So price will come and reaccumulate in this place that we can take price upward. We can take price upward. So let me look at the last aspect that we go to risk and trade management. Structure is, um, um, how do I put this now? For structure, you must be able to identify the major highs. We call them swing highs and swing lows. Why price was here, this was the last low. And then this was the last high. So you are waiting for price to come and give you a higher low. And then you take price at to a higher high. Now that price is selling, this is the last high. This is what we call range. This is the last low. Once price start retracing, look for the last high and look for the last low. Then wait for price to retrace inside. Then there are lower time frame confirmations and evidences of redistribution that we look at for here. Now that you are just coming into the um, smart traders family, the smart traders team, we're going to be looking at all of these to get entries, tighter stop losses, and all of that. There are other things we are going to look into. Now let's talk about trade and risk management. This is where I really want to dwell. I want to stay on this place and give you serious value, like serious value, serious value. So let's go. If you have gotten value so far, please drop a one one in the chat box for me. And then you have questions, drop them there. Why do I want to? dwell on trade and risk management. Trade and risk management. This is the cap of everything. I want to really stay here and show you one by one, trade and risk management. All right, this is what we want to look at now, trade and risk management. We'll soon bring this video to an end. So please just stay with me, stay with me. Thank you for those that are here. Thank you so much. Thank you for your, your feedback. Trade is not designed to be a win-win situation. Please, let me talk to you. Trade is not designed to be a win-win situation. Proper trade management and risk management is the key to account growth. So don't expect a win-win. Oh, you want to take $1 to make $1,000 in two days. Farms is not possible. You are hearing it straight from me. It's not possible. $10 to $10,000 in three days. It's not possible, farms. It's not. Stop loss is going to be hit because you are, you are not JP Morgan, you are not smart money, you don't control the market. So you just want to apply risk management and proper trade management in your trading. It doesn't matter what strategy you use. It doesn't matter what skill that you currently have or you are using. If you don't have a workable risk 
stroke trade management plan, I can assure you your account will never grow. And if your account refuses to grow, it means it's going to blow. You are hearing this one from me. If your account refuses to grow, it will blow. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just trying to just tell you as it is, exactly as it is. I, I, I'm trying to just tell you exactly as it is. So don't think maybe you are coming to this Forest Boot Camp and we are coming to hype you. You need a trading plan, risks in percentage plan. And you also need to have a short down plan, short down plan, a trading plan, risk in percentage plan, and a short down plan. I believe you are writing. That's why I'm re-emphasizing these things step by step. The account that you put so much energy to fund or you spend so much time to grow, not having a risk management or a trade management plan you are going to sustain a lot of injuries in this business, some that you may never recover from. That's true. You might be the best analyst. Yes, you might be able to analyze 20 assets, 15 assets, you know, all of that. Yeah, you can even trade smart money the way we are trading it because I've had a lot of my colleagues that trade smart money, a lot of my friends, my team, you know, good persons that I know, these guys, they know what they are doing. These people know exactly what they are doing. They know smart money. They know these things. If you call them to come and lecture and teach these things, they will do it far better than I do. But their account has refused to grow. This is the secret. This is why. I'm telling you. This is why. You might even know ICT. Maybe you have a MACD formula you use, or you are perfect in trend lines, you know, stuff like that, indicators. It doesn't matter. You might even have one alligator strategy. You know, all those good stuff, you know, all those good stuff. But if you don't know how to manage your trades using proper risk management, someone that does not um, know how to trade, but knows risk management and is taking signals, we do better than you. We have his account, account growing, increasing far better than you. There are persons that we have the same mentors, you know, by reason of what we do, people come to our, my DM and then they tell me, oh, bro, boss, farms, uh, mentor, you know, my account has refused to grow. I have a $20 account, I have $50 account, I funded $250 account and all of that. What is the problem? They tell me, oh, I over leverage. It simply means you knew the mistake you made. Why did you make it? Why? I traded more than my equity. I don't know. I mistakenly used the wrong stop loss. And then when trade went against me, my account got blown. And you are back to square one. You will keep moving in circles. You will keep moving in circles. If you don't know these three things, I think I should put them down here for you. A trading plan. If you don't have a trading plan, risk in percentage, let me put risk in percentage plan. And then lastly, there must be a short down. Short down plan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You had it for me. There must be a short down plan. Very, 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 very important. And now let me talk about. Um, for those of you that are just here on the call for the first time, or you are just being introduced to Forex in the course of this bootcamp, you need a mentor to acquire the skill, but you need proper risk and trade management plan plus discipline to grow your account. Let me say that again. You are new to Forex, welcome, sir. Welcome, ma. You need a mentor to acquire the skill but you need proper risk and trade management plan and discipline to grow your account. Your account will never grow if you don't know risk management. Your account will never grow if you don't know risk management. No, sir. Your account will never grow. So, um, like those in my mentorship, if they drop a trade setup, this is what I do. 
I'm not looking at whether they trade is in profit or they're in deep blues, they're making money. You know, that's what amuses young traders. Once they see blues, they are happy. It enters their head and they are celebrating. But I'm looking at what was your entry level? What was the stop loss? What is the profit, your target? This is what I'm looking at. And if all these things are not captured in your chart, some of them that are in this corner that are my mentorship, they know. If you drop a trade and I see, the trade might be going in profit. I'll just tell you this is wrong, simple. Uh, the profit is not the issue. If these things I want to talk about are not in your chart, are not in your trade, I know that you are sitting on a gunpowder. It's a matter of time it will explode. And when it explodes, I'm very sure you won't survive it. I'm, I'm sure of that one. Yes, sir. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. So I'll just tell you, this is wrong. So the person goes back, all right, sorry, boss, and goes to do it again. If he's still wrong, I'll tell you he's wrong. Because that's, that's what you paid for. You paid for my guidance. You paid so that I tell you what is right. And then I'll need to let you know this and this is what is wrong in your chat. You drop a trade, there's no stop loss. Young man, what are you doing? You drop a trade, there's no take profit, there's no target. You are not taking partials. What is the risk in dollar? You don't know. You just want to trade. No. If you keep doing like that, I'm sure that you will not survive. That account will not survive one week. If it survives one week, it was a mistake. It won't survive two weeks. And then when it gets blown, you get frustrated. And then I'm like, what's wrong? Somebody chatted me up last year, I think around October or so, and said, oh, boss, I'm not, I'm not coping. I'm not. I said, okay, what are you doing wrong? What are you doing rightly? And then he said, yes, okay, what is your equity? About $265. What is your risk? The amount he mentioned was, was not proper for that account size. Obviously, he does not know what he's risking. So he just enters a trade, and sometimes he loses $30. Sometimes he loses $5. Sometimes he loses $20. He doesn't even know the exact thing that he's losing. So that's what I want to talk about. This. So there are things for me, for me, for me. Take note. For me, this is what I do. Maybe I should write it for me or for Moses. I don't know how you want to put it. I don't know. But for me, this is what I do. First, Things that are important is number one to me is your risk per trade. What's your risk per trade? Very important. And you must not risk more than 5% of your account. Number two, what is the maximum trade that you take per day? Maximum trade per day. For me, I take three trades. Take three trades. That's what I say for me. Number three, what I do. What is your daily shutdown? For me, it's 15%. Then number four, what is your maximum risk in pips in pips a trade for me i risk 20 to 25 pips yes sir and then number 5 i will talk about I think number five, I just talked about uh, um, risk to ratio, risk to, to ratio. What's the risk to ratio reward that you use? Yeah, these are what I want to talk about. Okay. I think they are clear, it's clear, so I'm gonna, Talk about all these. Let me see if I can.
please just stay with me, stay with me. I'll soon be done. Stay with me. Stay with me, please. All right, all right. Okay, my risk to reward is one ratio three. Yes, one ratio three. My risk to reward is one ratio three. I think this is, I think it's okay like this. Okay. My risk per trade. What's your risk per trade? Don't risk more than one to 5% of your account. I have a $1,000 account. I have, for instance, let me say, I have a $50 account. $50 account, that's what I have. You're not supposed to risk more than 5% of this account. So let me pull out my calculator. This time you need to pull out your calculator. Let's begin to do um, some calculations. So I want to risk, let's say I'm risking $3. 3% of this account, that's 3% of $3 or $50. That's about $1.5 per trade, per trade. So I'm risking $1.5 per trade. So if I'm risking this, I'm not gonna do a lot of uh, typing and all of that. I'll just be showing you from the chart. Okay, if it's a $50 account and I'm risking risk, I'm risking, let's say 3%, for instance, that will give me, um, let me say equal to, equal to 1.5 dollars. That's what it will give me. If I have a $50 account and I'm risking 3%, it means that I'll risk $1.5 per trade. And maximum trades I can take per day is three trades. So if I take three trades per day, of $1.5, $1.5 and I take three trades, what would that give me? Drop the answer in the chat box, drop the answer in the comment section so that we look at it by three. That'll give me 4.5. So I'm going to be, please somebody should confirm that if I'm risking 4.5, God bless you. Thank you, thank you, that's true. So I'm, 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 I'm on point. If I have a $50 account and I'm risking 3% of that account, Per trade, I risk $1.5. So if I take three trades in a day, that would give me a total of $4.5. $4.5. So three trades, three trades will give me $4.5. So as I'm uh, calculating, you also type in three trades should give me $4.5. Now, what it means then is that my daily shutdown is 15% because I'm risking 5%. So your daily shutdown can reduce to 10%. Me, yeah, I'm risking 5%. So if I take three trades, three trades already give me 15%. So if I'm risking $3, $3 times three, that's 4.5. So your daily shutdown is three trades. What it means is that if you take three trades and the three trades hit stop loss, go and rest, shut down. If I take three trades and the three trades hit profit, go and rest. There's some of you stay on the chart from morning 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. You take trades from morning till night. You want to follow every trade. Mr. T drops a setup you want to enter. Mr. K drops a setup you want to enter. Shane Cole drops a setup you want to enter. Baba Tunde drops a setup you want to enter. The other rogue guy, somebody drops a set of, you want to just trade everything. So you end up not following your maximum trade per day. Daily shutdown. You have already made your 15%, whether in profit or in loss, shutdown. Now, what's the maximum in pips per trade? Maximum in pips per trade is 20 to 25 pips. What this is what it means. Now, if I enter here, let me remove this. Let's say in a bearish market, price is giving us this. And then I told you in a bearish market, we only look for sell on the lower highs. Now, since we want to look for sell, this is where you want to sell. Since price has given us a lower low, this is the first range, the high, and then price came and gave us 
and gave us this low. Now price is retracing back to expand. So in this retracement, you want to enter from around this region, this last lower high. So I want to sell from here. I put my entry here, stop loss at this high. And then I want to take profit down. So what is the risk per trade? Look at the stop loss. This stop loss is, I believe you can see this, this is 45 stop loss, 45 pips stop loss. And what is the trade saying? The risk management is saying, don't take more than 20 to 25 pips as your stop loss. So if you cannot take, if the trade is like this, let's say 25 pips, okay, this 20 pips. If your stop loss can be here, fine. But if this is how your stop loss can be, then this is 43 pips. You don't want to take this trade. You have to stay out. You don't want to take this trade because it's more than your stop loss. Your stop loss, discipline, sit on your hands. You want to wait for price to come back to uh, all of these, but you now check, okay, this is the entry. What it means is this, let me annotate on this. This line is your stop loss, that red line is the stop loss value. This is your entry value. This line is your entry. That's what this thing means. This is your entry, this is your stop loss at this line and this is your target, your take profit. That's what it means. For those of us that don't know how to use the short um, tool. And then this is your profit, your take profit. This value is your take profit. This is your take profit. So you want to make sure your stop loss here, this is this stop loss value. This is your stop loss value. This is your stop loss value. You can see 43 pips. So this 43 pips stop loss. And uh, if you want to practice risk management for this, no matter the account size, you shouldn't take more than this as your stop loss value. This is your risk, maximum risk, 20, 25, 30 pips. You can't take more than this. It's a rule that guides us in the Smart Traders Network. It's a rule that guides all my mentees in my mentorship team. It's a rule, you can't take more than this. So now you have gotten this. Now, what is your ratio? Your ratio is one to three. What it means is that you are risking $1 to make $3. That's what it means. If you are risking $10, you want to make $30. If you are risking $100, you want to make $300. If you are risking $5, you want to make $15. That's what this ratio simply means. So this is it. You can see a risk stroke ratio reward is here. This is four. This is four. So you have to bring it to three. Three. Your first profit is three. Three. Okay, this three around this place. Good. This is three. You can see it. Three is the risk to reward ratio. So what you are risking here, let's say you are risking $10 here. If this trade comes and hits your target, then you are going to be making $9. If this trade comes and hits your target, you make $9. You are risking $10 here. If it hits your target, you are going to make $30 from $10. This is how to use this. Then for the buy, that's for the sell. This is for the buy. You have your entry here. And then this is uh, a 63 pips stop loss. 63 pips, you can see that. This is the eight, like 48 pips. So you want to make sure this your pips is giving you, let's say 25, this 25 pips. And then this is one to three. Your risk to reward must be three. The risk to reward must be three, three. So if you are risking five dollars, is three point three. Yeah, three. Just yeah, somewhere around the uh, somewhere around the. All right, good. I got it now. So this three. So you are risking ten dollars here on the buy. You want to make thirty dollars. You are risking one dollar. You want to make a hundred dollars. One dollar, you make three dollars. This is how to trade. You don't want to just enter trades anyhow. As if um, you are the one that controls the market, you know where price is going to turn, where price will reverse. Nobody knows where price will reverse. Nobody knows, I can assure you that. So you want to follow this rule. I'm gonna take you to begin to do calculations. We're gonna do a lot of calculations now. So get your calculator ready. 
So now, how do you calculate your risk? The best way to calculate your risk. What is the best way? This is the best way. You want to have your dollar risk divided by stop loss. Let me write it here. How to calculate your risk? How to calculate? risk or best way to calculate your risk all right let me just leave it like this how to calculate your risk maybe i should take this to another page let's take this down let's take this down if you have not screenshot that let me bring it back screenshot it if you have not done that the video will be available yes that's true so screenshot it i will still need to take this one backward backwards i'll need to take it away i'll need it I need it up there, up above. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, fans. Let's go. How to calculate your risk? We're going to calculate risk right now. So, how to calculate your risk? This is the formula I use. Just use dollar, the dollar risk. The dollar risk. Let me put this, the dollar risk divided by yes your div where's my division sign let me see All right what did i do sorry about that fans okay i know what i'll do there are ways to do these things so let me use this as my divide. Dollar risk divided by stop loss pips. Stop loss pips. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dollar risk divided by stop loss pips. This is how to calculate what to use. Entries. All right, let's go to check this out. This is, um, I think this is it. This is your synthetic indices lot size and pips value, synthetic lot size. So we have crash 1000. The lowest lot size is 0 0.2 and the pips is 4.999. 0 0.2, 4.999. So let's go. I have a buy, I have a buy limit or I have a market I want to buy from here and then Let's say the stop loss is 20 pips. Let me use 20 pips. That's the stop loss. Okay, let's say stop loss is 19 pips. All right, 21 pips, this is 21 pips. And then I'm going to take one to three. One to three. That is the, my first trade for the day. And that is what discipline said. Three, one to three is what I'm risking. So if I'm risking $10, it will tell me what to use. If I'm risking $30, if I use this formula, it tells me what to use. Remember, I'm risking only 5% of my account. So let's say my account is, um, let's say my account is $500, $500. Let's go to $500. My account is $500. So if my account is $500 and I want to risk 5%, what is 5% of $500? Please drop that in the comment box for me. 5% of $500. 5% of $500. What's that? That's $25. All right, $25, yes. Okay, so $25. 5% of this is $25. Oh, I really want to write all this. 5% of my account of $500 equals to $25. Now, the question is, I want to find out what lot size should I use on my MT4 or on my MT5, what lot size should I use? And I've seen from this chart that the lowest lot size is 0 0.20 to zero and the pips is 4.999. 4.999, 4 
and 0 0.20. So what is the formula? Dollar risk per stop loss pips. So what's my dollar risk? I want to risk $25. So I'll say $25 divided by stop loss pips. Stop loss pips. What is the stop loss pips for crash 1000? 4.999. So I'll say $25 divided by 4.999. What's, what's your answer? Drop it in the box. What's your answer? Drop it in the box. Let me see. What's your answer? If you are following me, this is how we know that you are following me. I'm not just talking to myself. Drop it in the box for me. What is the... the if you divide your dollar risk, you want to risk $25 on this trade using 4.999 as your pips value for crash, for crash 1000. Please drop it for me, drop it for me. Just one person, the person says $5, no, it's five, but it's no longer in dollars. It's gonna be the lot size. This one gives you equal to lot size. So I'm gonna have one, well, 5% of this is $25. So 25, I'm risking $25 divided by four, 0.999 pips value for crash 1000 for C1K. Let me put it like that. It's going to give me five. So I'm going to use, give me five. Okay, so this is it. You said five, you are correct. Five, good. So it, it's lots, lots. It gives you five lots, five lots. Maybe I should move this here. So on your MT5, you are going to use five lots. I'm gonna use five lot size. So if you use five lot size here, am I correct? Dollar risk, sorry, stop loss pips. I was wrong, I was supposed to use this please. Stop loss pips. I was using um, um, the pips value. I'm supposed to use this, it's 21 pips, 21 pips, please. So I'm supposed to use $25 divided by, we're using this, we're using this example I put here. So let me use this example I put here for this trade. So what is the, what is the pips here? The pips value here is 21 pips. 21 point, we can see 21.98, this is, let me correct this, 21.98 please. Check that for me now, 21.98 is the stop loss value, is the stop loss pips, that's what I wanted to write. Is the stop loss pips for that trade. What's it giving us? What's it giving us? Drop the answer for me. So I'll say $25. I want to risk divided by 21.99. What's it giving us? 1.14. Correct. 1.14. You are correct. So I'm going to be having 1.14. So if I go to my MT5, I'm going to open a position of 1.14 or I can just open 1.1, 1.14 or 1.1, lot size on MT4, MT4, sorry, let me use five says because these indices or MT5. Yes, sir. Let, me, let me put it this way, let me put it this way. So $500 account, I'm risking this. I'm using this, I'm using this, I'm using this. Guys, I'm using this. What it means is that if I use 1.14 lot size in my account, I'm going to risk $25. So if you don't have up to this, you can't use 1.14 lot size. Let's say you have a, you want to risk $3 in that account. It's just to simply say 
divided by 21.98 pips. I want to risk $3 in that account. So how did you get the 21? All right, the 21 is, is the stop loss. Are you not seeing the stop loss value here? Okay, let me take it this way. Let me increase it. Maybe you see it better. Okay, this is, this, this is the stop loss now. Check this. The stop loss here is 85. And I said, you must not use a stop loss that is more than 20 to 25 pips. So you have to put your stop loss and keep checking it 32 until it comes to 25. This is 25.5. So let me reduce it to 21, 21 or 24. Okay, this is 24.6. So in this 24.6, and I want to use five, I want to risk $5 on the trade. I'll say $5 divided by 20, divided by 24.6, 24.6. That'll give me 0 0.2. So it means that if I go to my MT4, I'm going to open my account 0 0.2. That's what I will use. I see some of you use 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.7. You cannot determine the loss size to use if you have not first of all determined how much you want to risk on that trade. So it's to first of all determine the dollar value. I have a $21 account, 0 0.2, thank you. I have a $21, sorry, a $31 account. Let me say $31 account. And from that $31, I want to risk 3% of that account, or let's say 5%. 5% of the account, this is my rule. So 5% of a $31 account is 1.5. So if I want to risk $1.5 on each trade, it simply means I will have to divide that $1.5 by the stop loss. This stop loss is 24.6. So $1.5 divided by 24.6, that's how it is 0.06 on my MT4 or MT5. And since I cannot get that on crash 1000, what do I do? I'll have to let the trade go. It means that my account size cannot carry that trade. Are you getting it now? If you are getting it, just drop a one one in this in the box. How do you get the pips of stop loss before calculating to get your lot size? That's why you need to know how to use the buy and the sell icon. This is the buy icon. You are buying. What this means is that you, your entry is on this line. Your stop loss is here. And this is your target. This is what this thing means. And then the risk ratio here is three. You can see three, 3.44. This is your risk. So you are risking $1. You are risking $1 from here to here. If the trade hits stop loss, you risk $1. Then from this blue line to this place, you make $3. You make $3. Yes, yeah, somebody has gotten, if you understand what we are doing, please let me know in the comment section. Just drop a one one. I'm going to give you another example. This video is becoming too long and I want to bring this call to an end so that we can rest, refresh, and get set for the last phase. Tomorrow, I'm going to be having uh, one of my senior mentor, the super sniper boss in the house who is going to take us on the last aspect of this bootcamp is going to be so amazing, like so amazing. So this is how to use that. This is a buy and this is your short position. What it means is that you are selling from here and you want to take profit here. You're selling from here, you want to take profit. And so between here and here, you find out what's the stop loss. This is the stop loss value, the stop loss value. This is the stop loss pips, 75 pips stop loss. That's too big. We don't do that in the smart traders network. We don't do that. We make sure the stop loss is around 20 to 25 pips. So this is like 21 pips or 20 pips. Is this kind of stop loss we use? This kind of stop loss, that's what we use. Can you show the buy icon again and are they, are they possible on phones? Yeah, there are, they are possible on phones, but not, it's not like this on your phone. Yeah, it's not like this on your phone. I'm going to try to show you. Maybe I'll just do a screenshot of my phone and then I'll just try to show you. 
But let's understand this on system first. This is the icon. That's why it's better to trade with the system. It's far better to trade. So what this thing means is that this is your stop loss. Look at it. Stop loss value is always there, 67 pips. I'm saying that this is not a smart way of trading. So in the smart traders network, we want to use the stop loss of nothing more than 20 to 25 pips. So let's say 21 pips, 20 pips, 25 pips, 24 pips, 24 point something pips, 22 pips. Then you want to take your first profit from here. Just bring it down. Let the risk reward here be three, three, three. So that's where you put your take profit. We'll go to the charts. You understand better. So let me give you this. Let me remove this now. So let me write. Okay, let's calculate this together. Let's say you have a $200 account. $200 account. Follow me, everybody. $200 account. And what's the formula? You are risking 5%. So 5%, 5% of $200 account. Is, what's the answer? Let me know. 5% of $200 account is what? 5% of $200 account is $10. Be dropping your response for me fast, fast is $10. It's $10. So now I want to risk $10 in a trade. Follow me. Let me know the lot size I will use. Are you getting it? I want to risk $10 in the trade. Let me know the lot size I'm going to use. So let me put this here. Let me put this equals to, um, equals to dollar risk minus stop loss equals to lot size. Lot size to be used. So this formula is not complete until you have something like this. Your dollar risk divided by the stop loss pips is equal to the lot size to be used. I believe we understand that. Let me make it like this. Equals to the lot size to be used. So I think I can remove all of this. Okay, let's just do this one now. $200 is $10, 5% of the account. We are following this uh, discipline or our trading risk, our trade management um, uh, components whatever you want to call it. 5% of number one is $10. So I want to risk $10. Now let's leave, I'm going to take three trades. Let's leave that. Let's go to what is the risk in pips. So I'm buying, I want to buy. And this is 22 pips. This is one to three, 22 pips. Okay, this is 3.5. So this 22 pips, you can see 22 pips, 22.86. So this formula says divide the dollar risk. So I'm going to say 10 divided by 22.86. So I'll have on this is 10. Let me continue with this. So I'm going to have, I'm risking $10. My risk on this trade is $10. We already know that. So following this formula, I'll say that $10 divided by 22.86 divided by stop loss pips. So $10 and the stop loss pips here is 22.86. Who is dividing that for me? 
$10 divided by 22.86. $10 divided by 22.86. That gives me 0 0.43 lot size. Lot size to be used on your MT5. Lot size. So I'll go to my MT5. I'm going to use 0 0.4 lot size. Remember, we are, we are dealing with um, 0 0.4 loss size. All right, thank you, correct. You are following. It means you are following. So let me show you something like this. Let me show you VIX 25. I had a trade I've been holding on VIX 25. I can find this fine. This is VIX 25. This is VIX 25. I had all of this. What I've been looking at since, I had all of this. This was my break of structure. So I was waiting for price to come to this candle. You can see how this candle cleared liquidity. This was liquidity sweep. You can see liquidity sweep here. You can see how the early buyers here, this price came, to, uh, came down. So I was waiting for price to come to this imbalance. I had this imbalance. I was looking at price should come to all of this imbalance and give us that entry. Or price should come to this institutional candle, all of this push down, this whole move down. This is the move down that price should come into. All of this candle, this is the candle that cleared this liquidity. This is for that we're um, selling here. So I was expecting price to come into all of this. So now I want to buy this market. I'll have my, there are other lower time frame confirmations we use, yeah, there are, but I'll just set my limit, let's say at the entry here. And my stop loss is here. My stop loss will be here. My stop loss is here. Now, the question is, what is the, what is my risk? I'm risking five dollar. This is a two hundred dollar account, remember. And then I want to risk five dollar, which five percent, which will give me ten dollars. Now the pips. What is the pips? Let me go to the pips. What is my stop loss? What's the stop loss here? The stop loss is twelve point six. Stop loss of this trade is what twelve point six. So I'll simply go to twelve point six. And then this one, I'll move this one to one to three. One, two, three. Keep looking at this place until here becomes three. One, two, three. All right, this is one, two, three. Yeah, one, two, three. Okay, let's say one, two, three. This is your one, two, three. I want to take this trade. So I'm going to divide my $10 by 12.6. One four. So my ten dollar I divided by twelve point six one four. It gave me zero point seven nine. Zero point seven nine. It gave me zero point seven nine. So that zero point seven nine becomes the um, a lot size I'm going to use on my MT four. So let me show you something from this. This is the trade I've been on that trade. I've been on that trade. Let me see if I can show us. I've been on that trade. Let me show you. Yeah, I've entered. I've taken, uh, what I'm going to talk about now is I take partials often. So watch, price came here, entered, activated us actually, and price has come to hit TP. So if I risk $10 on this trade, I've made $30 already. Early money, early money. <laughs> if I'm risking $2 here, I've made six dollars already so look at that trade this is the trade this is the trade you see that entry that was the entry because i played that imbalance stop loss was on this low but now i put stop loss to entry because i've already taken partials on this trade and price has moved to all this level so you see i'm using having zero point now go i've taken partials on this trade yes sir that was the entry stop loss at this low, and then price went to all this side. If I want to um, show you, 
I, I wouldn't want to just leave this page and go to uh, Telegram. 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 Then I would have loved to show you that trick. For those in my mentorship group, you know, I dropped that on the mentorship group. When it went, I still came back and I showed you the results. It was a trade we caught on the mentorship group and I showed you the results. So I took that entry. I was risking like, I think about $8, $10, dollars yeah, eight ten dollars I just hit profit already. So I'm already $30 plus into this trade. That's my risk. Okay, let, let, I need to show you this. I'm sorry, just stay with me. We are recording, but this is a training. So you need to just, you need to just get it once and for all. Let it not be as if I'm just telling you stories. Let's see, should, let my telegram load up. Let it load up. Let me just load up the other one. So I want to ensure I take these kinds of trades that will just go one to three. I'm out of the market. I'm not the one controlling the market. Price came and gave another entry here. You wouldn't have seen this, but I've already caught this entry. One to three. Price has already hit DP. And let me show you from daily where this price is going to. Where price is headed. Let me show you. Where price is headed. But since we don't determine price, price is headed to all this place. Price is headed to this high. This high. Price is going for this high. Yes, price should come to all of this. All of this. I'm expecting price to come to all of this. So price should come. So imagine that this trade plays out. If this trade plays out, that's about one to 11. So we are risking one dollar. I'm making eleven dollars. So I'm risking ten dollars. I'm making about hundred and ten dollars. One to eleven. But trade management says I should take profit and stay out of the market at one to three. One to three. So I'm going to still stay out of the market. It doesn't matter whether I know that the price is going to go all the way to that region. Then I hold my trade. I'll take, I've taken partials, you can see. I've taken partials on this trade. So price can come and kick me out. It doesn't mean anything. I've already taken some profit off the table. So I'm showing you, I'm not supposed to do this, but let me show you. This is, this is my mentorship group. This is my mentorship group. Okay, fine. This was the trade. This was when I saw it. Look at the four hours. This is when I saw it. Price will come here or come here. Price has not activated. You see, I was expecting price to come activate me. Look at it. So I had my limit here. Price came activated us nicely and price went away. I came back, I posted it. Look at it. This was second entry. This was the first entry. Price came, gave a second entry at this region. And then this was a student that posted this, he was making his own profit, but I don't, I just focus. Price, okay, this is step index. I posted this step index also in our group that price was gonna come here. I think I did, yes. Good. Step index has not played out. I saw this imbalance. I know price will come here and then we sell down. Look at what step did. Let's go back to the chart. I'm not supposed to exit this, but let me just show you. But you don't want to just start jumping into the market just like that. You want to ensure you follow your trading plan. You want to make sure you follow your trading plan. Follow your trading plan. Step. Okay, this is step. Step. Okay. This is, I think it was a one hour. Yes, one hour. It was a one hour. I saw a redistribution within that zone. So I was expecting price to come. Yes, this was it. This was what I marked. I was expecting price to come back here. You can see all of this. I was expecting price to come back to this imbalance and give us an entry. You can see price came into that place. So if I was to sell this thing, I can put my limit here. I'll put my stop loss here. If it is within my rule, it's okay, I will play it. Now what is this stop loss? Look at this stop loss. This is 13.5 pips. And we are using what? We are using 20 to 25 pips. So this trade would have been okay if you set your stop loss here and take entry. 
then we need to go from one to three. This one to one ratio, one to three. This is one to three. Okay. So if you are on this trade now, you see price has not given us, has not come to take profit. But there's another way you can play this using lower time frame confirmations. These are the things we teach in the mentorship. You don't just want to enter your holding price. This is a one hour. For how many hours now price has been within this region? One, two, three, all these long hours and your mind is up and all that. But we can scale down to a lower time frame and get a better entry from this place. And price must have given a one to three on a lower time frame. Yes, I, I think that would be correct. Price must have given us a one to three. Okay, let's see. Let's see, let me remove this now. If you allow price to come to your zone and then, okay, this was it. I know what I'm saying. All right, all of this. You can see all of this move. Price took away this. Then price was already in your zone. This was the first move. Price cleared this. And price came back to all of this imbalance, all this imbalance that was here. So if you had played all of this, you shot this and you were picked because I would have played, since this is five minutes, I definitely would have played the open. I'm sure of that one. This already, price has given a one to seven. And what's the, what is the stop loss? Four pips, four pips. So you are risking four pips. We are others are risking 13 pips. You are risking four pips. 13 pips is still okay. It's within 20 pips. And you have made one to seven. So if you are risking $10, you have made $40. $40. Sorry, one to seven. That's about $70. All right. And you can see redistribution happening here already. I already know where price is going to come. For those in, in that trade smart money, you already can see what is happening around this place. Around this place. This would be a second entry. You can see what is happening around this place. So this is how you use this. You want to look at your dollar risk per the stop loss. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you want to cram all these things. No, it's just the lot size. This is the lowest lot size for these pips. So let's say VIX, VIX 100, uh, VIX 100. Okay, yes, VIX 100, this VIX 100. The lowest lot size is 0 0.20, while the piece value is five. What it means is that any move, the lowest, if you use this, you are going to be making this piece before you make money on 0 0.2. So if I now want to use a $200 account and I'm still going to risk 5%, that'll be $10. So $10, I risk it on first trade and I made my profit $30. Second profit, I risk $10 again and I made $30. I'm already having $60. Then third profit, third the trade for the day, three trades for the day, I made $10, $10. Sorry, the one to three, one to three in a day. That's $30 by three, I made $90. Now, where is interesting is that, let's assume I lose two trades out of the three trades and one goes my way. So for one trade, for one trade, one trade in profit, in profit, I'll make $30. That's if I'm risking risk, if I'm risking $10. Is that not true? I'm going to make one trade in profit, I make $30 using our one to three. So let me say using one to three, one to three, risk ratio reward, risking $10. Yes, let me put everything in, in a form you will be able to understand it. One trade in profit, you give me $30. Then I lose two trades, two trades loss. We give me minus $20, $10 per trade, $10 per trade. So I lose $20. And one profit, one trade in profit is what? $30. So I'm going to close that day. I'm going to end of the day. End of the day. I'm going to close the day with, um, what will I close the day with? Please drop it in the chat box. Let me know if you are following. 
with what I've written on, on the chart, I'm risking one to three as my risk reward by our formula, and I'm risking $10. One trade went my way, I made $30. Two trades, I lost $20 because two trades didn't go my way. What will be the end of the day? What will I close the end of the day with? Somebody say $10, please confirm, please confirm. Let me know. Let me, let me have the answer in the comment in the chat box, please. Let me know if that guy is correct. If he's a mathematician, let me know, let me know. $10, $10 in profit, all right. I've had three persons, $10 in profit, yes. We are 12 on the call, go ahead. Yes, go ahead, $12, okay, $10, correct, $10. Okay, that means you agree with me. We are in the same table. We are in agreement that you are closing market because this is market, this is business, you are closing market with $10. So you had a $100 account. You lost $20 and made $30. At the end of that day, you are closing the market with $110, $10 profit. What is $10 in your local currency? If you convert $10 in your local currency, that's a whole lot of money. That's a whole lot of money. This is what risk management will give you, will give you. Risk management will give you this. So I'm closing the day with $10. All right, can we go again? Let's, let's, let's just do another one. Let's do another one. Let's say I take three, three trades per day for five days in a week five days in a week, let's do some math. Let's crack our head before we round up. Using, as I'm writing the calculating with me, using one ratio three. We yeah, I'm risking $1, I'm going to be making $3. And I'm risking, I'm risking, Just a risk. I'm still risky like, uh, let's say $3, $3. Let's use $3, it's fair for those that have small equity. And then I take three trades per day in five days in a week. That's a total of three trades multiplied by, by five days in a week. That will give me 15 trades. Am I correct? 15 trades. That's 15 trades. Please, let's, let's solve this together. Now, out of these 15 trades, I lost 10 trades. 10 trades. So 10 losses. So $3 by 10. So 10 losses will give me, 10 losses will give me what? $30. Somebody is following me. Please, let's go, let's go, let's go. $10, I lost 10 trades in a row, 10 trades, so 10 trades in a week. And I made five trades, five trades, five trades went in profit. So five trades will give me, remember it's one to three. So we are risking the, uh, $3 and making $9. We are risking one, I'm making three. We are risking five. I'm making 15. So I'm risking $3. So five trade went my way. So $3 in three places. That is five trades that went my way. One trade that went my way gives me $9. Am I correct? So one trade equals to $9. Nine dollars. So five dollars, five trades in profit will be five dollars, five uh, trades rather, five trades multiplied by nine dollars. That's how much. Please, please give me the answer. If you understand what I'm saying, please communicate with me via the chat box. Forty-five in a week in profit. Yes, I've gotten. Two, three percent, yes, 45. One more confirmation. Let's get another witness. So if I have one trade, gives me $9 because I'm risking $3 to make nine. That's what 
one trade nine dollar nine dollar by by what did I write nine trades okay five dollars times okay nine all right so that give me what forty five dollars in a week are we in profit or we are losing the we are losing what is the end of the day end of the week okay no not end of the, end of the day now end of the week what's the end of the week profit 45 dollars if you agree with our small mathematics and you understand what we are doing not just to agree you understand what we are doing let, let us know in the comment section please oh jesus all right okay i got that now sorry about that what am i doing that's what i want to remove so let me move this here let me move this here so end of the week i make 45 dollars 15 dollars in profit okay 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 i made 45 dollars that's correct i remember i lost 30 dollars so 30 dollars i still have 15 percent $15 in profit end of the week $45 profit then I'll minus the $30 loss $30 loss so I'm closing market that week with extra $15 my account is $15 up my account is $15 off. This is what risk management does. This is what risk management does. So like this trade now, I just showed us. Assuming this trade goes to here and gives us a 1 to 12. Now you don't know whether it will give a 1 to 12. That's why you want to take 1 to 3 and leave the market. Just take 1 to 3. Leave the market. Watch. Wait for another setup. My boss will tell you that Trading is 10% um, skill, 10% psychology, and uh, about 80% of waiting. Wait for another setup. It might take time, but wait for another setup. That's how trading is. Just wait for another setup. Wait for another setup. You want to wait and see what price will do again. If price comes here and give you that entry, then you can take another one to three. So this is one, two, three. Yeah, this is around one to three. Yeah, something like this. So imagine you have those that now have, okay, it has just hit, take profit. You can see that weak, that's weak above it. That's how to trade. Then the other way to trade is learn to take partials. You entered from here. Let's say you are risking $10 from here. And once your trade hits one to three, what I do, everything I'm teaching is what I do. You can decide to tweak it to your own. But what I do is once trade hits one to three, I take partials. I don't use to adjust my stop loss. So I, I'll just remove like 70 to 80%. Yeah, I'm risking $3. I'll just close $2 and leave $1. So sometimes I drop trades on the, on, on, on the group and you will see me holding it for weeks, for days. I've taken partials. It doesn't consign me. I want price to come all the way to this side. But I've already taken partials out of $10 and risking. I've taken some amount like $8 off the table. So if the other $2 goes, no problem. I take partials from one to three or I break even. What does it mean to break even? I'll take stop loss to entry. I'll just take stop loss. So if this price comes to hit me out, let's assume price comes from here and hits me out. It simply means that I will not lose anything. That's what I showed you. Look at it. Stop loss is already on entry. So if price hits me out, I won't lose anything on this trade again. Meanwhile, the $8 I've already gained, I already added to my equity. This how to break even by moving stop loss to entry, or you just take partials at one to three, and then you allow the trade to do whatever it likes. If it now goes to this place, 
you can now close the trade. This is trade management, trade management. You want to stick to this formula. If you don't stick to this formula, you're going to have problem. Look for what is the risk in percentage. What's the risk in pips? What's the risk I'm risking on this trade? What's the risk? If the risk is not within your 20 to 25 pips, let it go. I want to risk $100. Just put $100 divide by the risk. Let's say you are making your entry from here. Let's say I want to buy, I want to sell from here. Let's say I want to sell from here. And then I put my stop loss here. This is the markup. How to mark up your chart is a different thing. But I'm showing you like this is the markup now. And I want to sell down to where it is now. First, I want to find out what is the stop loss. Stop loss is 7%. So since stop loss is 7%, it is within my 25 pips. And I want to risk $100. So I'll say $100 divided by 7.4. Do that for me, Sharp. Do that for me. I'm rounding up. I'm rounding up. $100 divided by 7.4. That's the last assignment I'll give you now. $100 divided by 7.4. That give me 13. $100 divided by the risk equals to the lot size. I'm going to use. If I want to risk hundred dollars here, I can use like a thirteen lots, a thirteen lots to give me hundred dollars. Yes, and then I'm going to take my one to three. One to three is that, that's the form. Just take one to three. I want to catch one trade on weekly, and then the trade keeps going. Thirteen point five. Yes, I can use thirteen point five as my lot size. It will tell me the lot size to use on MT five. So people come asking me, which lot should I use? Uh, what uh, lot should I use for a $21 account? Young man, stick with risk management, trade management. And once I get to one to three, instead of closing everything, I'll just put it here. I'll put this here. I'll say first TP. I'll take partials from here. And then if trade moves again, like one to five, I'll take another TP. Yes, one to five. I like taking another TP on, on one to five. Now, this is only possible if you have a whole lot of uh, equity that you make use of. I'll take another TP. Then I'll just put a second TP, second TP. So you keep managing your trade, small, small, managing your trade, managing your trade. This is how to grow an account. You want to take a $10 uh, uh, um, account to a $100 account, this is how to do it. This is how to do it. And if you don't have system, you want to see how to start making savings to get your own system. Very important. If you don't have system, and if you are trading with phone, I trade with phone, but I analyze with my system. I analyze, then I go to my system, my phone, and set all the limits. So this is how trading does. I'm going to be bringing this video to a close. If you have gotten value from this, just drop a fire emoji in the group as I want to round up now. Drop a fire emoji. Drop your questions for me right now. Let me attend to your questions. You've got five minutes to do that. Drop your questions in the comment section. The videos are going to be made available in our YouTube channel. This is our YouTube channel. The videos will be made available in our YouTube channel so that you can go over them again. I have a question here. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your feedback. You have questions, drop them. You have, um, 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 you don't have questions. You got value from this class today. Please drop a fire emoji for me. For me, this is brought to you by the Smart Traders network in case you have not screenshot this go ahead screenshot that this is our youtube channel it's loading up go there the market structure series are there one and two liquidity is there my one two three trading strategy is there everything you need for to be profitable in the forest market is there in case you have not watched how to prepare a trading plan you can check out the trading plan video that we did Go ahead, go ahead. Thank you for your feedback. And if you are not in the Telegram group, please do yourself a favor. Join the Telegram group. We drop chats there often, like often, often. 
off or we drop them in that place. Those that are in the, my mentorship group, you want to assess my mentorship, I'm going to tell you at the end of the bootcamp, you want a monitoring. Remember I told you, you need a mentor to acquire the skill. Then you need profit and, sorry, risk and trade management to be able to, plus discipline to grow your account. Then you need a mentor. We're gonna talk more on that by the end of the bootcamp. This is the Telegram group. We're already over 187. We are on fire in that place. Different setups are dropping. People are dropping setups. What do you see? We make corrections on them. You can see we make corrections on charts. We tell them, okay, look at this place and all of that. You don't want to miss that opportunity. These are our videos, this is our content. The first day, this is the video is already available. You can see different videos here with amazing views. So just go check out our YouTube channel. You have not subscribed, please, it's important to us hit the subscribe button, like our videos, engage them, comment on them. In that way, YouTube can recommend our videos to other persons. I'm bringing this video to a close. Since there is no question, I want to believe you got value from all of this. You got value from all of this. Thank you so much, fans, for hopping on. I really appreciate you for hopping on this call. If it's not you, the bootcamp will not be a success. It will not be a success. The bootcamp is a success because you hopped on the call. Thank you so much. I love you. I'm going to be dropping the video in the YouTube channel before the end of today. Thank you so much, fans. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Thank you.